so this will be are the world organizations that govern everybody um, learning from what's going on with Putin. That's what the video will be about. I hope you like the video. If you do like it, please do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. NATO, the uh, World Health Organization, there are about six big world um, com uh, com concerns that kind of uh, keep uh, all the other countries in line. And so we'll do a little reading on those. And uh, the question was specifically, uh, will they learn uh, from Putin's invasion of Ukraine? So that's what this will be about. I'll tell you a little about the, uh, the six uh, uh, concerns uh, right now, very quickly. So the UN, which is United Nations, is an international organization, or intergovernmental rather, is an intergovernmental organization whose purpose is to maintain international peace and security. It, it, was, it is established after World War II with the aim of preventing future uh, wars. Now NATO, the NATO, the North Atlantic Trade Organization, is an intergovernmental military alliance between 30 member states, 28 in Europe and two in uh, North America, and established in the aftermath of World War II. It constitutes a system of collective security where independent member states agree to mutual to mutual um, defense in response uh, to attack by any external party. It was established during the Cold War in response to the threat posed by the Soviet Union. Now, EU, the European Union, is a political and economic union of 27 member states located primarily in Europe. Its policies aim to ensure the free movement of people, goods, services, and capital within the international uh, market uh, and uh, enact legislation in justice and home affairs and maintain common policies on trade, agriculture, fisheries, and regional development. Then the WTO, the World Trade Organization, is an intergovernmental organization that regulates and facilitates international trade between nations establishing, revising, and enforcing rules that govern international trade. It facilitates trade in goods, services, and intellectual property among participating countries by providing a framework for negotiating trade agreements, aiming to reduce or eliminate tariffs, quotas, and other restrictions. Then the G20, the Group of 20, is an intergovernmental forum comprised of 19 countries from the European Union, um, or rather composed of 19 countries and the European Union, sorry. Now, uh, it works to address major issues related to the global economy, such as international finance stability, climate change mitigation, and substantial uh, sustainable development. It's compromised of, the, of most of the world's largest economies, both industrialized and developing nations, accounting for around 90% of gross world product, and is criticized for its uh, limited membership and lack of enforcement powers. Then the ICC, the International Criminal Court, is an intergovernmental organization and international tribunal. It is the first and only permanent international court with jurisdiction to prosecute individuals for international crimes of genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes, and the crime of aggression. And who does that sound like? Okay, so I've almost forgot what question I have here. So this is uh, Will. The question is, if you are asked, will world organizations like NATO, the World Health Organization, etc., learn from Vladimir Putin's invasion of uh, Ukraine? So will those organizations take some lessons from that um, invasion uh, to help and how they um, help guide uh, the rest of the world? So will world organizations learn from Putin's invasion? of Ukraine. Will world organizations learn from Putin's invasion of Ukraine? Will world organizations learn from Putin's invasion of Ukraine? Will world organizations learn from Putin's invasion of the Ukraine? I feel like these cards really need to good, get a good mix. Will world organizations learn from that? First, let's have a moment of meditation. Okay. 
Will world organizations learn from Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine? They have to. Will they learn? Six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We all lose all those world organizations take a lesson from what's happened. Russia's not the only country that has odd beliefs and, and brainwashes their citizens. The signifier card, will the world organizations learn? So we have the five of wands. The five of wands is, um, my Australian friends like to say, argy-bargy. Okay, so it's non-lethal, arguing back and forth, trying to make a point. Um, do I do it this way? Do I do it that way? The five of wands, wands are uh, plans, actions, forward movement. And the five of wands is just kind of endless, uh, pointless uh, arguing. But sometimes you have to have that to get to, to the point. Uh, the challenge to that then, speaking of a point, is this page of swords. Swords of truth, justice, rules, and law. The page is the very weakest of the court cards, so he brings a suggestion or a message of those things, truth, justice, rules, law, to this argument. The um, it's, it's, it's a beginning message. It's the beginnings of, of a message. The basis of this thing is the ten of swords, and of course, truth, justice, rules, law, and this is a complete and utter downfall, and that's kind of what we're seeing right now. It took this to get this uh, message out. In the past of this reading, with the Two of Swords is making a choice. So in the past, they have had to make choices about truth, justice, rules, law. So they fall back on their past as prologue. In the uh, sky of this then is appropriately the Hermit, which is taking uh, the time to shine a light on where to move forward at the risk of falling off that mountain. He's got a plan. He's trying to find out what to do next. So yeah, I would think that this is true. And in the um, likely outcome for the first part of this is this three ones. Perfect. These are long-term plans. Ones are plans, actions, forward movement. And this is long-term plans into the future. I think the answer is yes. I don't have to go forward, but I will. So uh, the question was, will the world organizations uh, you know, take a message from this invasion? Will the world organizations learn from this? Make the world safer, I guess. So the uh, very self of that question, will the world organizations learn, is um, the Eight of Swords. The Eight of Swords is feeling trapped. Truth, justice, rules, law. Feeling bound in. You can't make a move. But look, this is a cocoon. This is a butterfly about to break loose and be free of those binds. The... Um, environment that that's in is a broken heart. Of course it is. It's all this horror that has brought us to this. The uh, hopes and the fears for this then, with this page of pentacles, again, this is the beginning. This is the messenger of value. So this is the beginning, really scrutinizing that value to decide what to do with it next, how to sow that crop. Okay. And then the uh, likely outcome of the whole thing is the Six of Swords moving out of troubled water. Perfect, perfect, perfect cards for this question. Yeah, truth, justice, rules, law, moving all of the, the world out of troubled water, they will. So to read it again, uh, will the world organizations take a, mess, a lesson from this war of Putin's? Five of Wands, uh, yeah, there's going to be lots of discussion about it. And then the uh, Page of Swords brings in a, a very important message of truth and justice. The, the whole thing is underpinned by this complete stop. Okay, that we're experiencing now. And in the past of this reading is the fact that these world organizations do have to make these truth and justice decisions. And, the, and they know to learn from these world events. In the sky, this is the hermit, understanding that you're going to make sure you know where you're going before you put a step forward. And then the likely outcome of the first part of this is some long-term plan towards that end. And then the uh, self of that very question is this eight of swords is feeling just trapped. But this is a cocoon getting ready to, a chrysalis getting ready to become a butterfly. And then the, it's in the environment of a broken heart. For all of this has happened. The um, hopes of the fears is with this page of pentacles is scrutinizing that value and being smart enough to sow it into the ground to uh, prosper and grow and then flourish. And then the final outcome with the six of swords is moving the world out of troubled water. Yeah, they all take lessons from this and uh, that's good. Well, I don't know that that really addressed it, but uh, if it did for you, let me know. And if it didn't for you, let me know. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang okay, on. Okay, so this is Mystical Medley's uh, Tarot, a vintage cartoon tarot. I love, love, love this uh, deck. Uh, the box is amazing. This is at uh, Sterling Ethos, I guess is the press uh, that uh, distributes this. And it's uh, art by Gary Hall. 
And uh, so this is a fellow who's very uh, in tune with this uh, cartoonish kind of um, art. The, the box is so cool. Look how it, uh, how it opens. This slips from the bottom and it's got a magnet clasp, okay? When you open the bottom, you actually get a, a picture of a cartoon version of a Baphomet. And a Baphomet was kind of the... Um, uh, a, 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 uh, Diet worshipped by the Knights Templar, uh, presumably. And uh, if you would look at his actual, at the actual uh, Baphomet uh, right here, you'd see uh, what uh, that was expected to look like. And then this is the cartoon version uh, of that. When you take this box out, okay, it slides out like this. And right here, I don't know if you can see it on camera, there's just the very faintest uh, outline of the face of this uh, Baphomet down there. Okay, then if you look inside this box, I hope the, you can see inside there, there's a little um, cartoon of a star. Uh, it's temperance, I believe, because it's holding uh, a, a jugs in each hand, uh, trying to find some balance, I think. But it's so neat to have little hidden things like that inside the cards. And along those lines, once you take the cards out, Okay, inside this box, you've got the sun, and I hope you can see that inside there. I hope the light is enough for you to see that. So if you're putting this back into the box, uh, you would want this picture to, to line up appropriately once it's in there. And to do that, if you did it this way, he would be upside down. But if you see this little insignia right here, you know that when you put this back in here this way, that this is going to read uh, appropriately. Now, there's two extra cards in this deck, Happy Squirrel and Sad Squirrel, that you can leave in the deck and uh, and use, or uh, just uh, omit them, which is what I've done. And it gives you a definition of those in this uh, uh, booklet. And the booklet is great. Look how beautiful it is. It's very well made. It's in um, you know full color, easy to read, and some good suggestions for the cards and some good suggestions of uh, layouts. And uh, here it talks about, as a matter of fact, um, uh, Gary Hall. He says, I've always been fascinated by magic, the occult, and the imagery of the, of the tarot. I own several decks from fully usable traditional ones to more modern artistic ones, and I've always dreamed of, of creating my own someday. And so um, he did that. He was inspired by his ropey kind of uh, cartoonish art, and uh, and that first very card that he did was that uh, Baphomet. Okay, we've talked about all that, so let me slip those back into the box, and then we'll see uh, the cards. The cards are good weight, they're easy to handle, they're what you expect uh, to find in some cards, and um, and uh, they're they're beautiful. When I lay them out, you're going to see how interesting uh, the depictions are uh, on the cards. But it does take some studying of these individually before you can really use them to uh, read, uh, make a reading. And I lay the cards out like this so that you get a look at more than just a few cards that someone uses in a divination. And, um, and perhaps, because uh, I always wanted to see that when I was just uh, being a viewer uh, along these lines. So let's see if I can put these back in here. Well, no, I won't do that. I'll put this back in here appropriately with the face up. You can see that right there. And then we'll move these cards for you to enjoy. Hey, I'm Mark. It's been my journey through tarot. I'm going to do it all again tomorrow if you want to come. So ciao for now. really make a big difference. Thank you.